three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower clear. Hey again, Bill here with the Apollo Project, and I've got something really exciting to show you. Um, that uh, just finished the electronics for and, and actually a lot of the, the non-electronic components for um, but it's going to be a, a major part of the command module uh, for those who are familiar with the Apollo control panel you know what this is uh, for those who don't this is what's called the entry monitor system or the EMS um, what this does well it does a few things but its primary function is to monitor uh, the trajectory and some parameters for uh, the command module as it re-enters the atmosphere. Um, so uh, I figured something as significant as that needed to be um, replicated in at least some level of uh, uh, detail. Um, so I've, uh, you probably have seen it on the uh, website how I've uh, built all this up through a number of different circuits. Uh, this is not controller based, it's not Arduino based, this is all discrete logic. Um, it's actually one of the reasons why it took so long to build. Um, I was able to actually design it out on the breadboard and get it working fine, um, translating that to circuit boards that would uh, fit into this uh, panel and the uh, various components, the 3D printed items and all uh, was what was really hard because it uh, wound up having to be uh, put onto four different uh, circuit boards that are interconnected with the either headers or ribbon cable plus the switch itself is also connected by ribbon cable so but anyway uh, let me take you through a quick tour of what this does um, it was originally just going to be a countdown um, of course once I got the countdown done I said well maybe I can do this or maybe I can do that, maybe I can do something else, and it uh, built into something really sophisticated. Um, for those who uh, know about electronics, there are a ton of diodes in here uh, handling a lot of the um, simple logic from the switch. But anyway, uh, time to show off. Um, I don't have the full power supply yet, so this is being run off this little um, really old power supply but it's variable so it lets me uh, dial up the 12 volts that it needs to run. So in the off position, uh, the power to the uh, EMS is actually controlled by circuit breakers over on uh, one of the panels. Um, but off means it just wasn't doing anything other than sitting there in idle mode. So that's pretty much what I'm doing here. Um, but electrically, the off position um, and uh, two other positions are resets. They reset all of the circuitry so that it can get ready for the next thing. So I'm resetting. On the real entry monitor, the first five positions were a variety of tests uh, to make sure that uh, the detection circuitry was working okay. Um, the three biggest uh, items that it tests are the 0.05G indicator that uh, when it goes from uh, 0G to uh, 0.05G uh, as it re-enters the atmosphere, that's where the, uh, that's what's called entry interface. That's when uh, it, the capsule is actually entering the atmosphere. Um, so that's that's test number one. Test number two is to check the uh, corridor lights. Uh, these two lights right here, uh, one, the one up here indicates that you're supposed to be flying the command module in a heads up. Well, actually it's more like a foot up position. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I'd, I'd have to show you some of the diagrams for that. But anyway, the other one uh, is inverted. Uh, it'd be in a foot down position. Uh, and the reason for that is even though the command module is just a cone, when it's re-entering the atmosphere, it's not entering with the heat shield 90 degrees to the uh, direction of travel. It's actually at something of an angle, about mm, 62 degrees, I think. Um, I don't know the exact number. Uh, 
But at that angle, at the speeds that it's re-entering, which is something like 25,000 miles per hour, the command module actually has lift. Uh, so uh, if you are coming in too steep, well, actually, if you're coming in your regular mode, uh, you want to have a little bit of lift to uh, uh, help keep you from sinking into the atmosphere too fast. Um, if you are coming in too shallow, uh, the bottom light will indicate that you need to roll over and then your lift is going to actually pull you down. Um, and then uh, when it's time to turn back over, the up light will tell you to go back up right side up and uh, do that. So those, those three detectors, the up position, the down position, and the 0.05G are the three items that it tests. So let's go through those test modes real quick. Test one just turns on the backlight. Um, gets, it's doesn't actually test anything yet. It's just getting ready for the test. Test two uh, uh, tests the 0.05G circuitry, and we simulate that here by just turning on the 0.05G light. Uh, three uh, test the down detector circuitry uh, and we simulate that here by indicating the down light. Test four uh, is supposed to test the circuitry to see uh, when it knows that it's time to turn right side up. So it turns that off. Test five does the final check. It tests for up to see if uh, it can detect uh, when you're supposed to be right side up or to turn around to go up. So those are the five test modes. Uh, now get to the first reset or the second reset position. First one is off. Now the next two steps are to get ready for re-entry. Obviously we can't really re-enter so uh, it's just going to be a simulation. These switches over here don't actually work. It's just a, um, a 3D printed item. Uh, so, but what this would normally be used for would be to set the initial velocity that is predicted for re-entry. Um, if you've seen the movie Apollo 13, just before they start to re-enter the atmosphere, you hear um, Ken Mattingly call up, um, uh, at mark, your speed will be something like uh, 36,528 feet per second. Mark. Um, and so that is when they need to uh, say... Uh, tell the entry monitor that that's their uh, predicted speed at entry interface. The maximum number that it allows is 37,000 feet per second, or about 25,000 miles per hour. Um, so what I've done, I've simulated that. So uh, VO set loads 37,000 into the uh, delta V. And the next position would be to actually be ready for entry. Uh, right now, I don't have anything to signal that 0.5G has occurred. Excuse me, 0.05G has occurred. So right now, when you switch to entry mode, it starts the countdown. Um, I've got circuitry in here so that I will eventually, eventually be able to connect it to the diski, which I'm working on building a circuit for, so that I can have an entry, a re-entry simulation and at entry interface, the disky would be able to tell the EMS that it has reached 0.05G and will start the countdown based on a trigger from the disky. Until that happens, uh, we're going to switch to entry and it goes to the uh, entry mode. It's going to count down your velocity. It's going to start at 37,000 feet per second and it's going to count down as you decelerate in the atmosphere. Uh, and a lot of other things are going to happen. I'll show you what's going on here right now. Okay, we're about to re-enter, re-enter the atmosphere now. Okay. So you see the uh, velocity is now decreasing because we're in the atmosphere. Right now we're supposed to be flying in a heads-up position. Uh, we see that the uh, entry interface has passed. 0.05G has, indicate, uh, has turned on. The graph here, um, we just switched to the head-down mode, so let's rotate upside down. Uh, the graph here uh, on the real uh, EMS is a continuous scroll um, that is about two meters long that it moves in conjunction with the actual uh, speed uh, of the re-entry. Um, 
and it has a scribe, a stylus that scratches the back of the mylar to indicate uh, the G's that you are pulling, the, the, the uh, uh, strength of the deceleration in the atmosphere. Um, obviously, I can't do that, not with what I've got here. Um, maybe one day I can replace uh, this uh, uh, cheap setup with a, like an LCD display or something. But until that day happens, what I've got here is just a static graph. Uh, but it still has the G indicator. And the uh, blinking light uh, takes the place of the stylus scribe. And it's going to... It's not random, but it's not completely accurate either. Uh, but basically what it's doing, it's giving some level of approximation of how many G's you happen to be pulling um, right now. And it's now you're going to two G's. Um, the circuitry is designed so that uh, it blinks, so you can't actually see the, the transition. It just changes uh, during the blackout. Um, and now it's three G's. And four G's. Really starting to decelerate now. Um, and uh, it's telling us we need to be in an upside down uh, position to help uh, uh, keep from shallowing up too much. We're approaching five G's now. That's um, that's pretty significant. Oh, we're at six G's now. Goodness gracious. So, but anyway, that'll keep on going until it counts down to zero. When it reaches zero, the uh, 0.05 G indicator will go off. This will be at zero G's because we're not decelerating anymore. Um, but anyway, that's that. Um, there is one other function of the EMS, or one other major function. Um, I'm just going to put it in the reset mode right now. And what the other function is, is to uh, control the main engine for the command module, the um, Service Propulsion System, SPS engine. This is a big, big, big engine on the back um, for doing Delta V burns. Uh, Delta V uh, is a uh, slang term for change of velocity. V being velocity, Delta being change. Um, and so what this does it, oh, my voltage is going up. I need to dial it down a little bit. This is a cheap power supply. Um, and old. Uh, anyway, so uh, what the EMS would do, you would dial in, uh, using the switches that on this replica don't work, um, dial in the desired change in velocity. Say you wanted to leave the uh, Earth, uh, excuse me, leave uh, uh, lunar orbit and head back home. Uh, so you would uh, determine what your delta V needs to be um, and dial it in and then set it and then, uh, when you switch to delta V mode uh, you can have the uh, disky uh, control when that's supposed to happen and then when it uh, uh, gets the signal this the EMS actually fires does the ignition of the SPS engine itself and it will turn it off when the delta V is complete. It uh, The delta V counts from your desired difference in speed down to zero. Uh, so the maximum speed that it uh, can uh, handle is 14,000 feet per second. So I've simulated that by loading 14,000. And then when you switch to the delta V mode, the SPS thrust indicator comes on and the uh, delta V speed starts decreasing. Um, similar to the entry setup, uh, once I get the circuitry built for the disky, I will be able to have the disky do a countdown to the SPS thrust, and when the countdown reaches zero, you'll already be in the delta V position, but when the countdown reaches zero on the disky, that's when the SPS thrust indicator will come on and the uh, delta V starts decreasing. So, but anyway... That's the uh, new little toy that I've got here for the command module. Um, and it's got all kinds of stuff to, that it can do. And once I get the circuitry built for the disky, it can do even more. So, but anyway, um, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.